Today on the show, I'm happy to have Ori Karen. He's the co-founder of Linear B. They uh, perform visibility and automation across your engineering organization. So Ori, you were just telling me about the power of setting up your team for success and what has happened in the past when they weren't set up. Yes, one of the lessons I learned very early on, I actually learned it in the past, but sometimes you fail on the same failures like a couple of times, but I'm a first time founder. Before that, I was like an engineering leader twice, uh, but in Linea B specifically, I hired an in individual to own product. But very early on, as founders, you're very involved in the product and that's also my DNA and my partner DNA. So as I see this as a failure of my, as I brought someone and say, hey, I'm going to delegate product responsibilities to you. You're going to own the decisions on the product. But honestly, I wasn't willing to give them up yet. We're at a different scale right now. So right now we have some, someone who's owning product, but at that point in time, the boundaries weren't defined well. We have failures across the way, but the failures that are involving human beings, like doing misjustice with them a little bit, that's like where it hurts the most. So I see that as something that I learned that I got to be really open with that person, in, with new people I bring in and with myself more than everything about what I'm really ready to delegate and what not. So now when you make that decision to delegate, is the approach different? Are you really saying, okay, it's time and I'm going to empower this person? Yeah, I think everybody should know, by the way, their, their own uh, DNA and their own strength. One of my strengths is that I can still be a good sounding board and a partner for an executive in a, co a company. I won't be the one that is far removed and not asking any questions. Hey, you have, I want to understand the details. So I'm still there. I won't change myself to be something different totally different. I will ask questions about the details, but what I learned is, yeah, this is your kingdom. You, you, you make the decisions, you decide on how you build your team, what capabilities you need. So it's also not, there's a pendulum. You can easily go all the way to the other extreme say, Hey, you're the VP of customer success. And I'm not going to ask you any questions at all. That's not healthy also. So it is about setting boundaries, creating the right relationship be able to delegate a lot of this and still be able to probe and ask the questions when you need. So you actually went through uh, in your past ventures, a couple of acquisitions that you were able to bear witness to, one with Cisco and then uh, AT&T. So what were the learnings of going through that? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, these two are a little bit different. So in, with the at t it was early on, I was, uh, I was a head of engineering, I had 50 people, but cloud the cloud that was acquired by Cisco, I was a very influential person in that organization. I was a VP of R and D and was very involved in the, the decisions. I think I learned from both of these acquisitions a lot. It starts with when cloud Look, I learned a lot about uh, you start with an idea or a product, but you gotta be able to be open-minded and iterate. You end up solving sometimes a different pain point than when you started. So that ability to always question, always look, are we solving the, the right pain points and the right problems for our customers, being flexible, being very react fast, have a lot of self-criticism, sometimes even too much. I think that's our DNA. Like we, we achieved so much. What I fixed, by the way, I think there is okay. Be have a lot of self-criticism, but know how to celebrate milestones. Yeah, but also like lessons I took from the great leaders that I worked for. Always iterate, always when you lose a deal, always investigate what happened there. Keep on iterating and have a lot of perseverance. Don't stop. Like just get, continue to go. That's the main thing. So it's iterating, investigating, accepting the criticism, but then celebrating the wins. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. But did you bring that type of mentality into your, now this is an organization that you have founded. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I think we brought a lot of that into the, you, you collect experiences as you grow. Something that I should have said, both my partner, his name is Dan and myself, we worked together in, in a previous company. So we both came in with that type of experience of like, how do you continuously learn, continuously fix. I think Dan is a good balancer that says, okay, great. Let's continue to maintain that culture of let's continue to investigate all the things that, but he's good. And also, Hey, 
this is a great milestone. We should stop and celebrate every time like we, we hit a new record. So I think that's one important fix that we did. Another one is that based on a, not just out of previous companies that we worked on is around the culture that you have in your organization. I think that's a topic that a lot of the companies go to that we worked in and went to like cliches. The joke that we made is every other company has the same four values. So we are customer first, customer obsession, employee first, like you can't have everybody like look at the same. So we created something different. We call them behaviors. What, and we created like four categories of behaviors that we, we want to look for pe in people that when we interview them and, and when they're, we have performance reviews, et cetera, and it's working very well because it helps define what type of culture we want to have. Yeah. I, I always say it's like almost going through adulthood, your parents or the people, you take a lot of the great stuff that they give you, but you also try to create like a little bit of a better version of yourself. What are the four behaviors that you guys found are important? Yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's work-life balance, work -life balance. A, a bunch of like things there. There is, I forgot the name, but it's like a product first. Like everybody has to use the product. You're even in finance, you got to use the product. It's about a curiosity. It's about learning something new every day and bringing something new every day. And my favorite one is that there's no work that's underneath you, meaning uh, I'm the CEO of the company. We just finished eating and I need to clean the table. I'm going to clean the table. If I need to do a data entry table, a data entry job, I'm going to do it. And I'm, I'm, we're trying to lead with that example. And there's no work that's underneath, like that's below you or, Hey, I'm too smart for that job. So those are like the categories of behaviors that uh, there's, there's, there's more to it, but those are like my favorite ones. So through implementing these four behaviors, have you found a better fit in the staff and a more aligned goal and vision of the company? We definitely discovered that once we talked about the four categories of behaviors and we list them, you sometimes it's even like a, it happens naturally. People say, Hey, this is not the right company for me, which is fine. It's perfect. Sometimes it's surfacing like the right things, the right questions. I can, I always like to talk about myself to give myself as an example, but I can tell you that in work-life balance, I, I wasn't that good. Now it's always hard, right? Because you, you want, as a CEO, you want to say, Hey, we got to work hard here. We're building up. But it took me time to understand that uh, everybody uh, uh, is looking up to how I behave in, in that example of work-life balance, we chose, by the way, there is like foundational behavior is like exceptional behavior, exception foundational is, Hey, you do something to take care of yourself. I don't know. You run. You meditate, you swim, whatever. Exceptional is that you start a program and you share it with the rest of the company. So the cool thing that I keep on saying that is that when somebody in the company talked about yoga and how much it helped them, it convinced me to start doing it. And now I'm sharing it with everybody. Yeah. And it's hard as a CEO to say, Hey, work life balance is important, but, and also behave in the, in that same way and not work 16 hours, 17 hours a day. So with Linear B, is the goal that you speak with engineering leaders? Those are the right people for the service you have these days? Yeah, we help engineering organizations improve. We help engineering organizations. We identify that these are like the last department that is like a black box. It's really hard to, to measure, to identify bottlenecks. If you look at a sales funnel, you can really it's already very much digitized. You can see where are your bottlenecks, where you have problems, where are the conversion problems. The same, but the same cycle exists in software deliveries. So we like helping engineering organizations map their process, figure out where there are bottlenecks, help them solve it with a programmable interface that they can like impact the development process. So our buy will be definitely the engineering leader. So that these are the people we talk to, but when this is being rolled out, and yeah, engineering managers would use it, platform engineers, developers, a lot of users will enjoy the system. So if anybody who's interested in your service from our audience wanted to get in touch or look you up, how could they do so? Be, with me individually, uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on right. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more where I spend uh, more time than Twitter. 
and our company, Linea Beard, definitely can go check out like LineaBeard.io. We have a free version of the product where everybody can get their basic metrics for free forever, not even like uh, limited in time. And of course, our product will offer much more than like those basic uh, metrics. Everybody make sure to go check out Linear B. Thank you, Ori, for coming on the show and everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. If you like the show, make sure to give us a five-star review. I'm your host, Chad Pilecki, and we'll see you next time.